So I'm trying something new. I'm just doing a q and I'm going to start with one and let's see how this goes. If you have questions or if you have more questions that you want me to answer, um, just uh, message me. Before I start, I do need to say that this can't be taken as legal advice or financial advice. It's just my own opinions. So first question is, um, how do you say to clients that you will need more money if a project grows beyond what you initially quoted for. I had this problem with my first project and felt really uncomfortable asking for more money. So this is a pretty good question. <laughs> and it comes down to how you're pricing in the first place. So for example, um, the way I teach typically is that if it's a small project or it's, if it's a um, uh, like a, a package project, so you know what the boundaries are, how long it should take and what the price is, um, so if you've done a fixed fee um, and the scope of work goes beyond what it is that you've kind of outlined in that, that should be pretty easy to highlight during the process. So, um, for example, um, let's just say it's an e-design and um, what you include in your e-design is a, a plan, a 3D um, and some furniture ideas uh, and a mood board. Let's say that that's what your package includes. If your client now suddenly asks for um, you to start purchasing for them or start sourcing, well, that's an obvious um, addition. And then you can write to your client, um, give them a call. I would always back up any phone call with writing. So um, uh, follow it up with an email or start with an email and then call up and say, do you have any questions? about what I've written um, and in that email I can say so as we agree this is um, what my package included and you're asking me to um, do more than what we agreed um, this is how much I would typically charge for that extra service um, would you like me to go ahead is um, and as soon as I mean you wouldn't just start doing more work you would get approval or you would propose the new price to the client for extra work and then you would obviously um, uh, wait for the response for them to say yes okay um, go ahead with it or no actually I didn't realize that um, that's cool we'll do it ourselves so um, that is what I would do for a, a package price project because obviously there are clear boundaries with an e-design um, uh, and that's how you can offer a package price because you know what the boundaries are. Um, whereas when you're working on a large project, so for example, you've written a fee proposal and um, the scope of work is um, um, typically forever changing. <laughs> so this is um, very common on really, really large projects. So if you're doing full service design um, or something starts as a small project and, and becomes larger. So the scope of work expands. So typically on a project like this, you would have had a very clear um, proposal. And I think what's dangerous about um, fee proposals is that you're not quoting. The only thing you can quote on is the things that you can definitely um, guarantee that you can do within a certain amount of time. What you're actually doing is um, estimating. So you're estimating that it's going to take me this many hours or this long or this um, amount of time for this kind of work to be done. And that's what you're agreeing. So this is why we obviously price per phase. Um, so for example, in a fee proposal, if you're, if you've, um, let's just say you have quoted um, rather than estimated a um, uh, for design work to uh, let's say a, a four bedroom house and you, uh, your client is extending the house and you're, you've been asked to do not only looking at the lay layouts, but um, you're going to be taking everything from uh, design, concept design, all the way through to install. So depending on where in the process it changes, I mean, typically you have a, a chance at every phase to renegotiate your fee proposal, um, depending on the scope of work and how it's changed at um, uh, throughout the process so you wouldn't expect to be held account or held to your original fee proposal um, if a project spans over two years it's it's kind of ridiculous so this is why it's really important to say this is not a quote my fee proposal is for this and this is an estimate for how um, for the current knowledge that I have of this project at this time um, uh, so 
to answer your question, in order to ask for more money, it actually is a lot easier on a larger project to do this because you've got very clear um, phases and um, in your fee proposal, obviously, you would be um, writing out what it is that you're including. So let's just say your concept uh, didn't initially include three Ds, but because the client couldn't understand um, the real, uh, the, the big idea, you said, okay, um, or they've asked you to um, now do three Ds um, at the concept phase, which you hadn't uh, quoted for. Um, so you can go back quite easily in this case with your fee proposal and say, look, uh, this wasn't included. Um, this is how long I estimate it's going to take us to um, do some three days. Um, potentially, I would include usually some time for editing and um, uh, uh, presenting to your client as well as amending, making any amendments. If um, now once they see it in 3D, they understand the concept a little bit better, then um, they'll probably... Um, ask for a few tweaks or um, they may not but um, you could put as an option to um, add a few extra hours there if they don't use those hours you've made a profit so um, in that case uh, referring back to your fee proposal which is your agreement right so um, uh, writing out exactly what it is that you're um, agreeing to in that fee proposal is really important because it gives you the opportunity to now go back and um, say what is included and what isn't included and how much you've priced for that kind of information. So um, I, I think it, it means quite clear how you would do it for a smaller project because there's already set boundaries. For a larger project, there aren't very set boundaries. However, because you're um, really breaking it down per phase, it gives you an opportunity um, to always be checking in and checking back across what you've quoted for or proposed or estimated to say uh, this is what um, this is what we've agreed um, we're currently on track with this or we're not currently on track the scope of work is expanded which typically happens um, especially after concept uh, phase and I find this a lot on my own projects because they love my ideas <laughs> and then all of a sudden the project has become uh, a geo project <laughs> which is um, you know, they've asked for one thing and I've, I've obviously given them that and shown that as a concept. But then I always give my my input and um, it expands a little bit because they're like, wow, that's a great idea. I never thought of that. Obviously, this is why we hired you. And um, uh, and the scope of work kind of changes and adapts as, as the project goes along. But um, the key is always to have clarity on what it is that you've originally priced so that if there are any changes, you can go back and obviously obviously um, speak to your client about it. So how do you approach your client with it? Um, and I was nervous about this at the beginning too. So I think um, it's pretty normal to question, um, well, what if, they, what if they don't agree? But if you've been honest about what it is that you're including all the way along, um, it really, um, your relationship starts to grow with your client, especially past the, those first few um, uh, meetings. So, I mean, at first for me, uh, it was it was really hard because I, I, I am still really shy and um, it can, uh, I, I just get really embarrassed. <laughs> but um, what I find really worked for me is my sense of humor. So, um, uh, if my clients, uh, in a, in, like if we're in a face to face meeting or if I'm on site with them and they're like, Oh yeah, um, can you just add this and this and this and this? And you're like, huh, oh, well, I will, um, need to charge you more for that. <laughs> um, or you can just make a mention of it and just say, you're going to send me broke or, um, I'm going to have to look into how much that's going to, um, cost me. Uh, and see how I can include it for you. And then um, I think the hardest thing is if they do do it face to face, uh, you're really put on the spot and you're more willing to agree. Um, and I know I face that quite a lot because, um, well, people please, I just always wanted to give them everything that they wanted. And obviously I got taken advantage of quite a lot. So um, on site, you can always say, um, let me look into it. 
um, I'll get back to you. Um, let me see uh, what we've agreed or um, how that's going to work with uh, my timeline even or um, with, uh, with what I've agreed for on this project. Um, or um, you could flip it on the other way and say, oh, great, um, you're going to keep me employed for months. So um, uh, using a sense of humour, especially face to face, is um, uh, important or it was important for me, especially if you're quite shy, um, rather than making it awkward, which is, um, I mean, I've done that too, <laughs> which is, um, yeah, I'd rather go the humour route rather than the awkward route because um, money, talking about money is never a fun scenario, um, especially with a client and especially on a project where either the budget is tight or the budget is expanding and that's probably why they're asking you. Um, uh, so um, just knowing where you stand. Also being on top of your projects is going to always be um, like knowing what it is that you've agreed so that if people, if your clients, sorry, do ask you, you know that you are going above and beyond. Um, obviously at the beginning for especially like my four, first four or five projects, I just included it for free because I, I could. Um, I just wanted to make my clients happy and I... Um, I just gave them everything they asked for <laughs> because I was qualified to do so. But um, obviously I don't do that now. Um, I would go broke <laughs> and I don't, uh, well, I don't ever suggest that to my students because I I believe that um, well, the majority of us, um, if we start adding loads of um, uh, work for free, it undermines our quality of work or the quality of the industry as well as um, the value of our work. So um, keeping our standards high is really important, but that's a whole new topic, so I'm not going to get into it. Cool. So um, I think that answers it broadly. Um, uh, obviously, in every specific situation, there is a, a, a nuance that you could... Um, you know, uh, there's, you know, every situation is different, but if you stick to the golden rule that um, you know what your boundaries already are at the uh, at, on a project, so you know um, things like what the scope of work is. So this is for small projects as well as large projects. You know what you've agreed, so scope of work, um, the exact things that you're including in that, how long it's going to take you, and obviously the cost. So... Um, Anything that deviates from that is deviating from the contract. So that is obviously um, going to um, uh, trigger. And you're the one that has to do it because the client's going to keep pushing, right? So um, you've got to uh, be the person who says, um, hey, client, um, uh, I hope it's okay uh, just to point out that this isn't what we had previously agreed. And then always give them a proposal. So you don't just say it's going to cost you um, this and this and this. It's their option, right? So they don't have to choose to go with you. It's their option. So you give a proposal again, uh, which would be it's going to cost me this much or I'm, this is how much I would usually charge for this, this and this. Um, this is what you'll get. So again, you're going to put the boundaries in place. This is what they're paying for. This is how much it's going to cost and this is how long it's going to take. And then... Um, do you want me to proceed? You never just assume that because they've asked for it, they're going to, and you're going to charge more. So that is the biggest no, no. Um, you have to ask for extra money. You have to um, literally call it out and say, I hope it's okay. Um, you asked me today uh, whether this is uh, something I can add. Um, I've now had a chance to look through what um, uh, my, my diary or my schedule and um, I would have to charge extra for this because it's not what we agreed initially. Blah, 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 blah. You can always go back on what you say as long as you had the initial contract in place. Um, before, obviously, you agree the next stage. So hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any other questions, especially in regards to this topic and also uh, any other um, Q&As. I've got quite a list here. So... Um, I've got a few weeks worth to go ahead with, um, but I thought if you wanted more like this, um, uh, uh, right away and, um, and let me know and let's see if I can cover some topics that you're really, really struggling with in your interior design business. Cool.